So I wanted to make uh, just a simple comparison here, um, as this diagram shows. Um, going back to that earlier diagram, um, the diagram that I showed you right at the beginning and asked what is science, the many separate areas of study, those blocks, I'll just quickly go back to right there. There's many separate different areas of, of study. One of the things about Western science is that it specializes people specialize specifically in those areas and they don't necessarily talk to each other they don't necessarily communicate with each other and it's a specialized language that only those scientists can speak i call it scientific ease <laughs> and, and they speak that language of math or they speak that language of biology or they speak that language of chemistry and the reason that they do that is because it's important to have that information and to be able to use it. So when you take chemistry and so on, in, in, in ecology and astronomy and so on, all of those have different ways of documenting the information that's necessary for you to do something with it. It's not just a matter of learning, it, even though your first years are going to be about that. If you go into one of these areas, your first years are going to be about learning that language, learning what the knowledge is or the information is that it tells you. Go back. Okay. That, I think, is an important differentiation. It's not better or worse. It's a comparison that, that will help you as Aboriginal students that are going into that area. One of the things that really bothered me when I went to university, I was looking at all these courses, and, and I would look at uh, chemistry or biology or physics or math, and, and I was really good at them. I just didn't find it relevant. I was like, what good is this? What am I, what am I going to use before I'm going to go home to my res, right? But I took it anyway because it was interesting to my mind. And uh, one of the things I found out later was that it was really a good thing that I did, that my mind was interested in those areas. Because when I returned home, one of the things uh, after my undergrad degree, my bachelor's degree, I returned home. And uh, I started working at an Elgin Center. And that's when the elders were working to put together that plan to bring back our knowledge and to make it relevant and useful for today, for our young people to be able to use it and find it relevant and find it exciting. So when I came back, one of the things that I started looking at with our elders is that idea of our science, Aboriginal science. How should we think about it? And one of the things I realized is the difference is that our knowledge is community knowledge. It's in our language, it's in our ceremonies, it's in our hunting and fishing and medicine gathering practices. So that knowledge is, is not thought about as science. It's just simply thought about as our way. So I'm gonna go on to this next one. So let's take uh, one, one area of study there uh, as just an example. Let's take ecological science, which is the area that I'm familiar with and that I have my PhD in. It's the study of how our environment is structured and how it behaves. In other words, what it does. But when you think about ecological knowledge for us as indigenous people, it's about the gifts of the landfalls. These are my grandsons. Um, they're they're uh, gapping salmon, traditional gapping methods. And, that um, one the furthest um, that way on the left was my youngest grandson. They got the biggest salmon. He was pretty proud of that day. But uh, they're learning the traditional method of gathering food. And this was for the ceremonies. This was for the, um, what we call Sikha'ewla, the, the ceremony to give honor and thanks back to the salmon. So they were gaffing traditionally. The first salmon that was returning after our work after 2004 
to return the salmon to our river. And this is the first time that they have re those salmon had returned. This was uh, three years ago that we turned as far as the McIntyre Dam. Two years ago, they made it past the McIntyre Dam, and they're now at OK Falls. Next year, they will be at the most northern point, which is pending in my community. For the first time in 50-some years, they will reach their home where they have always gone for thousands of years. And it's the work of our seal people their biologists and their elders that have put this together with uh, people that uh, work with us in the university. So I'm going to go back to this main question I'm going to end pretty soon here. But the main question that we're all facing, everybody, all of humanity, we're in this all together, that for the first time in the 3.8 billion years that life has existed on Earth, there is one species that's the human being that's altering the biological, physical, and chemical features of the planet on such a scale that it's causing all kinds of things to go wrong. The climate change, things going extinct, diseases, the possibility of floods and tornadoes and hurricanes and all these other different kinds of things. Human beings are causing that. Not the planet, not the animals, human beings. So when we talk about the idea of indigenous peoples, the issues of poverty, health, injustice, all of those things when we resist different things like the tar sands or we resist uh, the destruction, for instance, in the Okanagan of five watersheds just to build a ski resort. And you know, all our people stood up and said, no, you're not going to do it. It's not because we're just mean people, angry people, or whatever. It's because of those connections and that responsibility. It never goes away if you know it, if you understand it, if you attend the ceremonies, if you hear the elders speak the language, and you see that connection being carried out in our ceremonies, in our work that we do to try to make those things rebalance. If you think about what Jerry Mander said here, I went to a conference that, uh, that he did in New York called Paradigm Waters, Indigenous Peoples' Resistance to Globalization. And they published a book out of all the different uh, indigenous presentations, and there were many indigenous scientists and traditional knowledge teachers and people that, um, you know, that Alvin knows and other people know have been doing years of work to try to rebalance things and to try to help non-native people understand how we might work together, how we might collaborate together to do that. Because it is important, and so that connection what, so what is the connection of that to science and Aboriginal people, right? 